Ooh. Uh, oh dear. Hello, sisters. This looks like I'm having a problem. I, I, I think I'm going to have to... I think I'm going to have to hang up and call again as soon as I can because there's something funky going on here. I can't even hang up. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's see if this if this works out. So welcome, welcome. It is that time. It's Sunday morning here in Sedona, Arizona, and uh, I am hoping that this works. Nope, it's getting stuck again. Okay, I am going to give this another try. This, I'm just concerned. I'm going to uh, close up some things on my computer and... Hi there, Janelle. Hi. You see me and hear me okay. All right, well, let's see how this goes. If something gets funky, I'm going to... I'll start over. Hey, Evelina, are you hearing me okay? Am I coming in clear um, and consistent? Are there hiccups in the messaging? Just let me know. It looks like we've got uh, sisters coming on the call here. All right. Um, sorry if there's any technical difficulty. It looked like I was like freezing up when I was saying things. So what I'm going to do as sisters are coming on the line here is I'm going to look and see if I have any other programs. Yeah, see, I've got uh, Keynote. I'm, I'm going to close any other programs running in the background on my computer just yeah I got numbers up too all right we'll quit that uh, to hopefully support <coughs> um, the computer and staying consistent okay morning morning hey Pat hey Amy welcome uh, okay so you can hear me okay well let's let's give it a go Okay, so today's theme is Atlantis, Winter Solstice, and the Return of the Light. <sighs> Let's begin with a little grounding and centering. So go ahead and make yourself comfortable. If it's safe to do so, you can close your eyes. And take a moment to bring your attention inward to your inner self. Breathing in allowing the breath to nourish you like a golden light supporting your deep inner being and your body-mind vehicle. And as you exhale, allow the breath to take with it like a vehicle all that does not serve you. And again, breathing in, taking in the breath of life, receiving the life force energy, allowing yourself to be nourished in spirit, mind, and body. And then exhaling to surrender anything that does not serve you, known and unknown, as you settle more deeply into full present awareness. And now next breath in, imagine that the breath is love itself and you are drinking it in with every cell of your being, with all of your divine eternal soul. And then exhaling to settle in as if you were being held in the warm emb embrace of eternal love. Hmm. And as you sit and receive and Feel held by love, like a golden light circulating and saturating you. You come to remember that you are this light, this love, this eternity. And you feel the way that secret knowing deep within begins to open up, expand, and saturate and shine out from your deepest inner core. And letting that light that you are, that love that you are, connect, expand and connect with every other seemingly separate being on this earth plane. 
reclaiming the oneness of our eternity beyond this form and feel the bliss that comes when you awaken this ancient knowing and embrace all of life with the love that you are. And another deep breath in. And as you exhale, let roots go down out of your feet and your root chakra down into the earth, grounding and centering you in the remembrance that you are a divine eternal being having a temporary experience on earth and honoring beloved Gaia, who willingly allows us to walk upon her sacred body. And then when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Thank you, sisters. That was a really juicy, deeply inspired, uh, just coming through me, uh, offering. And I feel really good. I hope you do, too, on this day. Um, so let me say hello to those of you who have just joined us. I said Pat, Amy, Gina, Janelle, Evelina. Rosemary, Usha, Vivian. Hey, Vivian. Uh, made it live. Yay. Inga, Petra. And again, Gina says hello. Um, uh, welcome, all of you. And Gina says I'm having voice delay on somewhat. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, Usha says lovely offering. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, it was. It came through. So I was just the, the transmitting channel rather than the creatrix, if you will, or co-creating with the, my higher self. Maybe we could say that would be more accurate uh, or with the goddess. Kimberly, good morning. Uh, okay, so, um, so the topic at hand, Atlantis winter solstice and the return of the light. So I want a, a little bit of backstory here. Of late, uh, the last two weeks, uh, oh, I feel guidance coming in now. I feel um, someone is here. It's Isis. Blessings. Thank you, Isis. Um, uh, I've been, the, the, the whole Atlantis story thing has been coming up lately for me. It's been coming up like in my personal being as questions. And then I start to see it like on YouTube videos or little posts or something. So, you know, when you get those messages, they're coming in multiple ways, just like repeating numbers, for example. To me, that's spirit saying, look here, look here, look here. So I've been inquiring about that and um, asking about it internally. And, and so I wanted to, to, that's why I want to address the Atlantis uh, issue. And then we have, a, we're in a very powerful window of time right now, sisters. So let me talk a little about that and how that connects with the return of the light. And then we'll sort of back into the Atlantis piece. So yesterday... Mm, La Virgen is here as well. The Virgin of Guadalupe Day. So this is a, I was telling my husband about this and you know, of all the goddesses that we have, of all the divine feminine uh, imagery we have to help us reawaken that within ourselves, um, one of the most contemporary that I am aware of is La Virgen, the Virgin of Guadalupe. Uh, and she uh, made four appearances, I believe, to a humble uh, native, uh, you know, mixtos Indian Mexican man uh, named Juan Diego back in the 1500s, so the 16th century. I don't remember the exact date. So that seems like a long time ago. But then if you think about people like Isis or Ishtar or, you know, Inanna or Hecate or any of, you know, any of the, the, the Greek goddesses or... Oshan or the, 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 all of those goddesses. Actually, La Vergen is one of the most contemporary and far more contemporary than Mother Mary herself as the sort of, um, you know, that Levant Middle Eastern uh, ascended master, we could say, Mother Mary. So La Vergen, yesterday was her feast day. Tomorrow, we have a powerful eclipse so the fourth. So today's the thirteenth Sunday from where I'm speaking to you here in New uh, in Sedona, Arizona. Yesterday, the twelfth feast of Guadalupe. Tomorrow, the fourteenth, powerful uh, lunar lunar eclipse. No wait, new moon solar eclipse. 
uh, and uh, it and it's square Mars, the war god, uh, in the sign of Aries, the war god, among other things, but also leadership and and strength and courage to um, to lead the way, um, to fight the good fight, to stand for justice, all of that. So uh, there's a lot of potency there, and then we have. Uh, I, what is it, on the 21st, so a week from tomorrow, we have the winter solstice up in the north and the summer solstice in the south. And this winter solstice is ex especially potent because some think that this is the actual end of the Mayan calendar. Others say that the date between December 21st, 20, 2012, which was the trigger for a great awakening for so many people, and this window was the awakening window and now December 21st, 2020, now we move into a new energetic of the really the birthing of the new age. Um, astrologically, we have the two social planets, Saturn, or, or I want to say them in, in their order of distance from the sun, Jupiter and Saturn, both jump from the sign of Capricorn into the sign of Aquarius. They will be at zero degrees Aquarius on the um, the winter solstice. And for many astrologers, that really heralds the sort of significator or indicator point of our shift into the, into the age of Aquarius. Now, I think I've said this before. Uh, what we know is that a shift of ages takes several hundred years. So to me, it's not like, you know, boom, we're in the age of Aquarius. But, but it's a gradual shift. But there are sort of demarcation points of power, if you will. So... Sisters, we are in a very powerful place in time right now, in this illusion of time and place. And the way we leverage our light is important because uh, we are in a sort of spiritual battle for the soul of humanity, not to put too sharp a point on it, uh, you know, in this dream world of separation from the one. So ultimately, at the highest level, we are perfectly safe. We are as God, God has created us. We are divine, eternal beings. We cannot be harmed. And in this experience we're having, we are in an ascension process from the third dimensional reality in a deep, deep unconsciousness and limitation and belief in separation, uh, ascending into a 50 consciousness that is more empathic, more sensitive, more aware, more loving, more compassionate, more rec recognizing of the oneness of all things. So in that journey right now, we're at a crux point. And that crux point, because we've been in duality and we're ascending to a more non-dual state of awareness, the duality polarization is playing out big time on the planet, whether you're looking at politics or you're looking at um, the uh, injections rolling out and the, the beliefs around that, or whether you're looking at the um, conflict among people and their beliefs around health and safety and all that stuff, whatever you're looking at, we see polarization. And the deeper down the rabbit hole you go on that, the worse you see. You start, you know, as the as the veils are removed from your eyes, you see just the depths of depravity of the 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 the, the shadow. Let's say. So those of us who are here to hold the light, as I always say, like we really, this is the time where where we can choose to consciously leverage the power, energetic powers for good, or we could just be neutral. Uh, and not 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 leverage this time. You know, I'm sure you know what my opinion of of this is, of what I think we would be best to do, because those who are in the let's say the shadow side leading the charge of the shadow side, you better believe they are esoteric masters, and they not not the minions on the streets. I'm not talking about them or the minions in small in offices who are doing petty tyranny. I'm talking about the whoever's behind it you better believe they are leveraging these frequencies for their own ill-gotten Ill gains or their intent for ill-gotten gains. So we are here to hold the light. Now let's talk about the solstice. So the solstice, the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere is the uh, return of the light. So as we know, you know, the farther north you live, the more you'll really know this in, in your bones. That from the summer solstice to the winter solstice, the days get shorter and the nights get longer. And you have to, if you were to live not based on grocery stores anymore, but based on the, the fruits of your own labor and those of the within your community, you know that you'd be having to store things for winter just like a squirrel. 
And the harder the, you know, the worse the harvest in summer, the harder the winters can be. And this is the time where, you know, or back in Samhain, Halloween, um, All Saints Day time, that's the final harvest of animals in our, for our ancestors in the northern climates. Now, the ancestors in the southern climates or those in warm uh, equatorial climates had different cycles. So to that, I'm not speaking right now. I'm speaking to those, uh, to those of us who have those ancestors. But you know what? We all have lived all of that stuff, so it doesn't even matter. I'm talking about the symbology of, of the winter solstice right now. The sun is about to be reborn. The sun is about to start shining a little longer each day in the northern hemisphere. And as it does, we, we, we bring more light to the earth in the northern hemisphere. But that's where the majority of the population on earth lives. So... It's not to, to negate any of the other experiences. It's just to kind of show you how I'm working these things together for this, this presentation. So we can see how the symbology of the return of the light, the winter solstice, can, can be a way for us to enter into an energetic intention to reclaim the light within ourselves at this powerful juncture on the earth. When we are, when we have these social planets moving into the age of Aquarius, signif significating the age of Aquarius, when we have a, a, a powerful um, tomorrow um, eclipse that is squaring the energies of war on the shadow side, the energies of uh, fierce uh, sovereign leadership on the other side, um, we can leverage them for good or for ill. So, um, so when we see the, this idea of the return of the light, we can use that energy. We can use that energy that the ancient ancestors of the Northern Hemisphere, pre-Christian uh, uh, peoples who worked the earth and lived with the earth, use so that there's an energetic frequency, a, a river of energy we can tap into to say, I'm going to really use this, this birth of the Sun King which is what it was seen as symbolically. And as the energy I'm going to ride, the wave I'm going to ride, I'm going to harness this to reclaim the light within, to beam the light within, to awaken with loving benevolence my sisters and brothers by simply embodying the light of love. So, so this period of time is an ideal time for you to create a ceremony for yourself or with your community or your family to honor the return of the light. Because on the planet right now, that is what's happening. North, Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere. It looks like we are going into the deepest darkness. In term, if you use darkness as shadow, as uh, the absence of the ability to gather information, okay? We are in the depths of con confusion and fear and uncertainty and what's going to happen. But the light is about to come, and we know this. Uh, prophecies have said for a long time, we are about to ascend into a new era. The fifth dimension is more of a light-filled, as in light is information, not as in light white skin. None of this uh, uh, arbitrary polarization of color. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about frequency here. I'm talking about light as information, darkness as the absence of light. In other words, you can't see, you can't read the information well. So that's what's returning. Now, let's tie all this. I hope I'm not going off too far on a tangent here, but I want to tie this into Atlantis. So before I do, let's just take a breath. Go ahead and take a breath. I feel like a, a lot of information is coming through me. Um, so, um, Atlantis. Now, I, um, I I think many of you know I'm a member of uh, Tina Spaulding's community, and she is one of many channelers channeling Jesus right now on the earth, uh, one of our great master teachers of compassion, love, and Christ of consciousness. So, of course, he's here right now. Um, and... Uh, I, I feel that her channeling is some of the highest channeling I've ever, ever experienced or seen. Now that aside, I'm in her community. So 
Last week I asked about Atlantis, but my question didn't get to be asked. So I'm hoping to, in the next uh, time our community gets together for a live stream, to ask it again. But here's what I am getting about Atlantis. That Atlantis, when Atlantis fell, many of us who were there are here now. And when Atlantis fell, it may have been when in the cycle, the yuga cycles of the great cycles of consciousness on Earth, that was when we were leaving the, the photon belt or the part of the galaxy that is more high frequency and began our descent into lower vibrational consciousnesses, often called, there was the Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, and then the Iron Age, which doesn't correlate to what we call the Iron Age in our contemporary historical teachings. But in other words, descending in consciousness and frequency all the way down until, um, you know, I don't know when, maybe the Middle Ages or right, no, right around the time of Jesus's birth and teachings, that was the depth of the dark Kali Yuga, the, the fear, the, all of that. And now we're rising up and we, in the 1700s, we left the Kali Yuga into the next Yuga or the next part of the cycle and we're on the ascent. And so those of us who were in Atlantis when Atlantis fell and uh, I don't know when it really was in history, but that was part of that descent of our consciousness into the depths. Now we're at somewhere on the other side coming back. But many of the themes are at play now that were at play then, like the abuse of technology, like the spying on the people, like the misuse of power to the point of devastating destruction, which many of us in the 80s thought would be nuclear, but in Atlantis apparently was using crystal technology to actually, you know, um, destroy, be destructive. Um, uh, the, the, what's another theme that's coming up? The trust in external authority to the point of blind obedience, obedience and blind trust. That's another theme that I'm, I'm, you know, that's been coming through, through downloads, through readings, when I do astro uh, tarot readings, even looking at the astrology. So there are some themes here that we are, like those of us who were there during the fall, maybe many of us have been living incarnations here or elsewhere, learning the lessons of the mistakes we made then in order to be the heralders of the light now. That's kind of what I want to, that's a very long-winded way of explaining what I wanted to say, which is that this winter solstice is a great time to really leverage our power to call, to invoke and, and honor the return of the light as we individually and collectively heal our collective, individual and collective wounds and traumas around the fall of Atlantis so that this time we get it right. So that's what I wanted to say. That was my message for today. And uh, I hope that makes sense. And um, now I would like to have a read. I'm going to look at my big screen here so I don't have to squint. And uh, go ahead, if you have questions or comments, let's, let's dive in and see how that lands for any of you. All right, so let's see. Uh, I'm just scrolling through a lot of the good mornings and hellos. Uh, Janelle said there's been a second or so delay. Thank you for this beautiful message today, she says. So at least the message got through. Uh, uh, Kimberly says, my mom, Donna, is watching with me today on my 40th birthday. What a joy. Well, happy, blessed birthday, dear Kimberly. And welcome, Donna. Thank you for joining us. And how beautiful that a mother and daughter get to connect in this way. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. That is the, the healing of the feminine, too, and, and beautiful indeed. Uh, hey, Sasha, welcome. Good morning, Sharon. Um, she says, happy Earth Day and blessings for your new year. Oh, maybe, oh, she was replying to Kimberly, yeah. Oh, that's a great way to say it, Sharon. Happy Earth Day instead of birthday. It's true because we are eternal divine beings, but when we're born here on Earth, it's, that's beautiful. Thank you, Sharon. I had never seen that before. 
Uh, Pat says her shaman wisdom card today was truth and justice. Mm. Yukta, good morning. Namaste to you as well, sister. Um, Sharon says she's been lighting La Vergen de Guadalupe candles on her altar for the past week. Mm, beautiful. Um, and she and Yukta says, so glad we're meeting on the eve of the dark moon solar eclipse and we are in the portal of the 1212 through 2112, or as we in the U.S. would say, 1221. Uh, what a what a powerful time of its ascension indeed. It, it truly is. Uh, it's like a portal. It's like these two. I'm seeing this image of these two pillars, uh, these gates into the temple of our sacred awakening or uh, a rite of passage into the next level. Mm, thank you. Um, Janelle says, this is so fascinating. Yukta says, what are we expecting in the six month window starting from the eclipse uh, tomorrow until July, 2021? Yeah, so Yukta, I, I think Correct me if I'm wrong, sister, but I think you're referring to the fact that when we have an eclipse during eclipse season, the energies are at play until the next eclipse season, which will be around the Lion's Gate in July. Is that is that what you mean? Um, you know, I haven't studied it astrologically. Well, I have been doing some astrological studying because I'm creating a, uh, a training for another community. But um, let me just connect in with that. Yeah. All right. It's here already. The info's here. So there's a choice point going on for us right now as humans. And it, and it has to do with our choice of which timeline we are going on. And when we choose conscious awakening through the light of the divine and the love of the divine, and we then really state our intention very powerfully in this now moment, we have the opportunity to go through this next six month window in a very different way than perhaps some of our sleeping sisters and brothers uh, are going through or those who are actually choosing a dissension 3D locked in timeline. There is a lot right now rolling out on the planet there's the, uh, those, you know, the things I'm not going to say them because I'm putting, going to put this on YouTube and I don't want it to be taken down. There's the, um, things, the competition going on in the United States that's still uncertain, but may not turn out the way some people want. Um, there's deep, uh, uh, evil that's going to be revealed in the next, uh, six months, uh, and beyond. And you know they aren't going to be liking that and they're not going to be going down without a fight. And so there's a lot of potential shenanigans, potential for violence, potential for danger, potential for supply line cuts, all of that. And um, those that there will be those that find themselves in the fray and those that are not in the fray. There are those who uh, will be experiencing that as terror and trauma and distress and and abnegation, uh, complete stealing of their sovereignty in all ways, even though some of us are experiencing, you know, all over the world, this is happening, right? But there will be those of us who have a different kind of experience, even as we may witness chaos all around. So I believe that what we do now will, to, to a greater degree or lesser degree, unless our soul has a specific contract to be plugged into a certain place to anchor and beam out light in the midst of the chaos. Many of us will find ourselves in, let's say, more benevolent or safer circumstances. Um, now, some of that requires practical planning, too. And I know I, I, know I owe you, actually, I'm going to write it down right now, a, a video on, on um, um, uh, going off grid. Going off grid. And there's a whole reason why behind why I didn't do that on Friday when I intended. But uh, anyway, um, so I feel that this the next six months, there's going to be a lot of chaos. When we look at the fact that uh, Saturn is going to end up squaring Mars. So Saturn in the sign of Aquarius squaring Mars. I'd have to go into Astro Geek speak. But anyway, squaring Mars in Aries. No, no, no. Not, is it Saturn? Oh, yeah. And then in a... No, no wait. How is this how is this working? There's a what's called a T square, 
with, and the three players are Aquarius, uh, Uranus and Taurus, Saturn in Aquarius, and Mars in Aries. And that has a lot of potential for a lot of disruption, uh, um, a lot of chaos, uh, violence, um, uh, control, all of these kind of things. And um, so there's there's some stuff that's going to happen astrologically. And so, again, kind of I know I'm going off a little bit too much. so I'm going to reel myself in now. There's a lot that's going to happen in the next six months, and we would do well to be ready practically and spiritually. So what I've been talking about today, the return of the light and leveraging this energy time spiritually is for that part of it. The practical part of it is supply yourselves with some food, extra food and water. If you don't need it. Great. Perfect. And uh, if, if you do, it's good to have it. So, um, okay. So I hope that helps. Please let me know. Yukta, that was a great question. Um, Vivian says, I was in Lemuria. Does that mean I was not in Atlantis? I, I, there's different stories on that. And I don't know my understanding. I've heard stories about how the two, there was like this battle or something, but remember these are long time civilizations. Probably a lot of us were in both. My understanding was that Lemuria was an even higher civilization as in less physically dense. And then there was some kind of dis descent or transition into uh, Atlantis. Maybe there was overlap. Um, and then, you know, Atlantis fell. So I, I'm not, this is not my area of expertise, which is why I I've, I've actually have some questions about it that I would like to ask about it as well. Um, Vivian says, so we are in a moment of choice declaring our alliance with the light, regardless of our past alignment. Thank you for summarizing that in fewer words than I did, Vivian. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Judy, good morning. Um, uh, I heard about the military positioning going on. <laughs> Thank you for that respell. Yes. The military Terry positioning going on in the United States is uh, something that could be looked into if you're if that attracts you. There's definitely something being prepared that you won't see in the news. Janelle, do the different astrological signs, I'm a Pisces, go through this six month window differently or with slight variations according to their sign? Uh, this is a great question. Um, there's no simple yes or no to that. Your sun sign is, uh, from, from the point of view of an evolutionary astrologer, your sun sign is the integration point of your ego. It is not the most significant player in your chart by even a long shot, unless it happens to be paired with Pluto, one of the nodes of the moon, or in a sign that's connected with those, um, or you've got like a stack up in your sun sign, you know, a bunch of planets, not just your sun there. Uh, or a bunch of um, sensitive points like your ascendant or your midheaven. So uh, everyone will go through this experience differently. And it totally depends on how these um, planetary transits are laying out in your personal charts. And that's what people go to astrologers for, really. I'm not trying to pimp my services at all. I mean, but that is what I do with people as we look at that. So it totally depends on where these things are landing. But here, if you know something about your astrology, you would want to do a, a transit chart or at least look at the um, the early end degrees of, of um, Capricorn, the early degrees of Aquarius, Aries, and um, Taurus. And you want to see what planets or sensitive points are there in your chart. And that's what's going to be uh, set off a lot this year. And then you got to look by house and sign. So um, you would look to the house, you would look to the planet, and you would start to sort of put together the potential. So if it's happening in your house of relationships, the seventh house, that's very different than if it's happening in your house of career, right? Um, if it's happening in uh, with your planet Venus versus it's happening with your um, one of your outer planets, again, very different indeed. So I hope that helps without going too deep down the astro rabbit hole. Um, Jennifer says, I agree, Dawn. It seems that many in the U.S. are souls that live during Atlantis, but I don't feel the fear that I may have experienced from the fall of Atlantis. This is, Jennifer, thank you for this. I'm going to unpack this a little. I think this is really important what you're saying here. 
Based on the patterns I have observed, many more people have awoken, and I believe there will be some resistance, but not for too long. It may be that I believe we will learn the lessons of love, and the next pole shift may be a smoother transition to usher in the golden age. I'm right with you, sister. I thank you for bringing this up. And I want to tell you a quick personal story about what I just went through the other day, which is why I didn't do the thing on going off grid. A series of pieces of information came into me, the, uh, came into my field of awareness Friday night, including the Millie Terry repositioning happening here. And I, and it triggered in me such uh, despair. Despair is the only word I can say. And I feel like I was connecting in with two energies. An incarnation in France during uh, the time when Nazi Germany invaded that country and took it over, and the French resistance formed, and the fall of Atlantis. A fear, so that st it started with despair, and it went into fear. It went into a state of deep fear and hopelessness, like, what the F is the point? We've been here before. The Republic has fallen. Uh, uh, the, the, the planet is lost. For those of you who are Lord of the Ring fans, the point at which all of the, the armies of Middle Earth, the good guys, storm the gates of Mordor as Frodo and Samwise are almost to the pit, the fire pit of, of Mordor, and then Frodo goes crazy from the ring and wants to keep it for himself. So if you know that point, where all seems lost. And the armies of good storm the gates, absolutely knowing they're at suicide. That was how I felt on Friday night. And I was going to uh, either in that afternoon, really, or Saturday morning, I was going to record this other video to you. But I woke up in such despair that I feel certain that I was connecting in with my incarnation primarily in Atlantis, when it was all was lost. So why am I saying that? Because I feel like we may have, some of us may go through that. You know, I always share with you, or I, I do my best to always share with you or as often as I can, something I've been through that may help you. So I want to invite us all to give ourselves permission to have those moments where we fall to our knees in despair, in, in sadness, in heartbreak, in whatever. Because in these times to come, I think we're going to see a lot of difficulty. A lot of difficulty. And we have to have compassion for our sisters and brothers who whose hearts are in the right place, but are, who are fighting against their own sovereignty, against their own freedom. And there's going to be a lot of shock that comes out when when people see the truth of the depth of and de, of the depravity of those uh, those idols whom they trust and there may be maneuvers and things that happen that looks that that takes us to the brink of looking like all is lost and so we have to give ourselves permission to feel the feels because part of what we're doing is actually releasing old the the, the vestiges within the soul complex of those experiencing uh, experiences. We're releasing them so that they don't hold us captive anymore. So if you find yourself up against a wall like that, of fear, of pain, of deep despair, of all of that, I want to invite you to give yourself permission to feel the feels, to not reject it. Now, it's not a permission slip to be an Eeyore for the rest of your life and go, we're screwed and I'm just going to stay in this misery programming. No, but it is important that we, we, we do that. So if you need to create a ceremonial space, a sacred space, if you need to take a day off work or a half day and just cry at your altar, do it. And if that, that because something will release for you. And then also take the practical steps too. Please, I always, you know, I, I, I want to emphasize that today. If you have fear around, you know, will the supply lines get cut? Well, they might. Buy some water containers now and fill them up. Get yourself a Berkey filter or something so you can pour things through that and have clean drinking water or life straw so that you can get clean drinking water. This is, our world is going to change. And it's good to have some of those practical things that your mind-body vehicle needs 
to be able to be the continued vessel for your awakening soul and the light you came here to bring. Take care of it. Get some extra food supplies because there could be some shaky ground ahead in the 3D. Um, so do the practical, but also do the spiritual work of letting yourself connect in with fear or trauma of maybe the, maybe the fall of Atlantis. So again, I hope I'm not going off too far on these tangents here, but I'm getting like fast downloads today. And honestly, sisters, here's why I, I believe, because I, allow my, I allowed myself to be taken to my knees on Friday night and Saturday morning, waking up at 4 a.m. after four hours of sleep, weeping with grief weeping with heartache, weeping with a sense of all is lost, and then being able to rise out of that through spiritual practice, reading my Course in Miracles, journaling it out, literally expelling it from my being through journaling it out and taking myself back out and then beginning to get signs and indicators and other channeled messages that said, indeed, this is not Atlantis anymore. This is the ascension. Okay, that was a lot of words. Let's see. Um, okay, so let's let me back up. I see some more juicy stuff here. Uh, Evelina says she was both in Lemuria and Atlantis. I bet a lot of us were. I, I, I do feel that's true. Uh, Inga says the good thing is that more people will awaken due to the control, controlled chaos. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It's backfiring. I, I learned this new phrase, the Streisand effect. The Streisand effect is when you try and cover something up and everything you do actually makes it more exposed. So, and that is what's going on for, you know, for those of us who look into this stuff. Uh, Janelle says she's going to book her session with me soon. The astrology, yeah, Janelle, then we're going to be able to dive deep into that, you know, your chart and really have a, really understand how it's going, it is and is going to impact your personal journey. Um, Yukta asks, can we start making plans to transition into sustain sustainable community living off grid now in this time frame, or do we still wait? Oh no, sister, if you have any means at all, start now, start last week, start last year, really. You know what you can do? This is what my hubby and I are doing because we're buying land to go off grid. Um, and, uh, Start going on, you, you can go on YouTube because those videos aren't censored or you can go elsewhere to BitChute or uh, Brighteon or one of these other YouTube alternatives and look up sustainable living, off-grid living, alternative living, alternative um, home building, all of that. Really, really, there's lots of information on uh, out there. I would encourage that. And again, I have put it down, going off grid. I know I'm going to make that now that I'm in a higher frequency. I'm going to put that in my calendar. So, um, But in the meantime, there are people who have been living off grid who maybe can speak into this far, far, excuse me, better than I can. So absolutely um, do some research and start Noticing what inspires you rather than what you fear. Don't let fear push you. Let inspiration pull you. So if it's gardening, let that be the doorway into your off-grid experience. If it's alternative building, if it's looking for uh, communities that you can join with, um, this is what you want to, you know, in your research, what is going to pull you forward to your inspiration. Um, Vivian says, I hear you, Dawn. I too felt that, uh, that, but it also put some pieces into place that helped me to make sense of the whole thing unfolding. So I, I, I'm just going to let that be Vivian, because there was a lot that you were probably referring to there. So, um, Pat says our benevolent space family are waiting to come forward. Yes. So that's the other thing is we do have our galactic sisters and brothers, some of whom are helping us on energetic levels while still honoring the prime directive of, of our free will. Gina says, thank you, Dawn. The Millie Terry issue hit me with fear too. Yeah. I've been praying and doing my work and feel we will be okay. Uh, but sure is rattling. Mm, yep, it is. It, it is rattling. Uh, Judy. Hey, Judy. I also want to remind everyone our heart chakras are opening too, and that brings about more empathy. So we're also feeling everyone on different levels. Oh, yes. Thank you. I did not bring that point up. And thank you. We're getting more sensitive. 
And in that sensitivity process, sometimes we take on and absorb what I call OPE, other people's energy, other people's fear, the fear in the collective. There are times where I wake up and I've, I've said this before, where I just feel like anxiety and I don't know what it is. And I do my spiritual practices. And sometimes I think, is it some old memory, old guilt, old shame, old crap, old whatever coming up for me to witness and, and clear? Yeah, sometimes it is. And I think sometimes it is literally just I wake up open and all of a sudden tap into the collective fear. And uh, so thank you for bringing that up, Judy. Uh, so Vivian says, does that have a connection to Barbara? I'm not, oh, Barbara Streisand. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I don't know where that Streisand effect concept comes from. I, I, I kept hearing it and I did a quick search on it and I found just the, the meaning of it, but I didn't go deeper into where it came from. It would be an interesting little thing to research. Um, uh, uh, Vivian was referring to the ruse, uh, news of the Millie, uh, but the Millie Terry, uh, that helped to put some things into place regarding election issues and alliances. Um, Pat says, oh, she was replying to Vivian, maybe Tri Strand is in this, in, in the Celtic. I don't know. I don't know. But, um, in terms of the whole Millie Terry movement, yeah, I mean, we can certainly look at it as something frightful, but we could also look at it as something, you know, that that's because uh, there's protection and support of not being totally overrun. Um, you know, I don't know. We have, it has yet to be seen. And let's, let's remember that one person holding the light of love, anchoring it, actively engaging it, act, actively doing our own inner work, to be a even more powerful vessel of the love light and the divine power coming through. One of us is more powerful than countless numbers of them. Now, maybe not countless, maybe a thousand, maybe 10,000. I don't know, but we're very powerful right now. So let us use this again, this powerful window of time, the winter solstice and the return of the light. Let us use that energy to help navigate energetically, steer the course of the unfoldment, the way the awakening unfolds. Okay, so Janelle says, my opinion, by this time, December 2020, you mean 2021 probably, the level of someone's empathy guides, uh, oh, by this time, no, it's December 2020, the level of someone's empathy guides their choice of which political leader to support. Um, and then she puts... Uh, we have a nice new formula. Thank you, Janelle. This is cool. T equals lack of E. It's an interesting prospect. Absolutely. I think there's uh, there is definitely some some uh, a resonant alignment there that I see for sure. Uh, but again, we know also that there are many people who are their hearts are in the right place, but the mind control, the propaganda and the and the um, and the brainwashing is so deep and so wide that empathy is there, but support for T is not. So let's remember that as well. Um, this is among the people, the masses, not, not those behind the scenes who are playing out the dramas. So uh, with that, let me just tune in. There's, it feels like there's something else. Now, I feel like that's been a lot already. We're already at 48 minutes, but does anyone have anything else they want to ask or share while we're here? And then we'll, uh, we'll just connect in for a kind of wrap up. Okay. Okay. Well, as always, sisters, um, uh, Janelle says, not wanting to imply that B equals lots of E necessarily. Okay. Or lots of E. Yeah. Yeah. I think, of course, it's there's a lot of, um, it's like a spectrum, right? There's some spectrum here. And then there's deep polarization. Uh, and then there are those of us returned from Atlantis, Lemuria, other dramas and traumas, returned over many incarnations, returned from other space-time dimensions as uh as the on the rescue mission 
the ground crew, here to remember our true divine beings, our true divine nature, here to remember and reclaim the light, here to release all of the trauma from multiple incarnations that we may be a clear channel vessel for love. And we are here, and this is the time we came for, and now we can really leverage the return of the light in the name of love in this great awakening process for all those sisters and brothers lost in form, all those sisters and brothers who do not understand or know the what's going on, and all those sisters and brothers who just want their lives to be simple, supported, safe, and a place where they can raise their children unbothered and unmolested by the insanity. We came for these times, sisters. So have a blessed, blessed uh, window of this week ahead. And a quick reminder uh, that in the next day or two, I will be announcing officially the time, date, and link to register for our Winter Solstice Cacao Ceremony on the winter of uh, Winter Solstice, on the, on the evening, excuse me, of Winter Solstice. That's a week from tomorrow, the 21st of December, 2020. And that is a free event with two priestesses. I'm not facilitate. I'm not a cacao priestess. Uh, I have two cacao priestesses who will be facilitating that, and we will be in sacred ceremonial space. And I'm excited to hold that light and share that with each of you, either live or on the recording. So with that, my beloved sisters, thank you for holding the light. Thank you for showing up here. Thank you for holding the space that calls me again and again to show up and step into my soul's mission for this life. I so honor each of you for the courage and the love to face whatever it is you are facing right now and to hold that light. Let us always lift as we rise. Let us be the light and the love and the consciousness of the Christed that we came here to see in the world. I love you dearly. I thank you, and I will see you very soon. Mwah! Have a beautiful rest of your day or evening. Bye for now.